In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The mercy of the Lord fills the earth. Such are the first words of this Mass on the second Sunday after Easter. This Sunday is very much Divine Mercy Sunday then. How does the mercy of the Lord fill the earth? Through the saving grace of God, reaching out to us poor sinners. Yes, but how does the saving grace of God reach out to us poor sinners? Through the sacrifice of Christ on the cross that merited salvation for all. And how are the saving merits of Christ applied to our souls? Through the sacraments Christ instituted and trusting them to the only church he founded to be administered by the apostles Christ selected and taught over three years. The same apostles Christ ordained on Monday Thursday. The apostles Christ sent after his resurrection to teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things he had prescribed. Thus, dear friends, the mercy of the Lord fills the earth not at random, not subjectively, not to be received without certainty and order. Rather, the mercy of the Lord fills the earth in a well-organized fashion according to objective sacred rites performed by duly appointed ministers. This second Sunday after Easter is called Good Shepherd Sunday because the Lord Jesus is referred to as the Good Shepherd. Why? Why a shepherd? We know that our Lord was a carpenter by trade, not a shepherd. And yet, St. Peter told us in the epistle, you were a sheep going astray, but you are now converted to the shepherd and bishop of your souls. In the Holy Gospel today, our Lord himself declares, I am the good shepherd. Sheep are vulnerable, they flock together. When one goes the wrong direction, the others follow. They cannot survive long without guidance. Christ guides and feeds his flock, the church. He does it through the bishops and priests, successors of the apostles. In the votive mass, to ask God for priestly vocations, the epistle quotes the Old Testament when young Samuel is called three times by God in his sleep. Three times the young man goes to ask the prophet Heli what he wants of him until Heli realizes that it is God calling the young man. Friends, let us pray today that young men will ask the right person to interpret the signs of a possible calling to the sacred priesthood. Let us pray that they will not be deterred by the world, the flesh, and the devil. If a young man thinks he might be called to become a priest, let him not ask the world for advice, because the world will tell him, priests are not relevant anymore. Don't waste your life. Choose a real career. 
make a difference. If a young man thinks he might be called to become a priest, let him not ask the flesh for advice, because the flesh will tell him celibacy is unnatural, prayer is boring, and there is no fun wearing a cassock. Preaching is tiring. If a young man thinks he might be called to become a priest, let him not ask the devil for advice, because the devil will tell him, priests are criminals, priests are liars, priests are fools. Don't think of becoming one says the devil. On the contrary, the gospel of the same mass for vocations quotes our Lord who promises his apostles, you shall see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Our Lord refers here to the dream of Jacob in the Old Testament, and Jacob saw in his sleep a ladder standing upon the earth, and the top thereof touching heaven, and the angels also of God ascending and descending by it. What is that ladder? It is the cross of our Lord. It is the bridge connecting again the earth and heaven. It is the safe passage between this veil of tears and the heavenly bliss with God in eternity. And now, who, who are the angels? Note that they ascend before they descend. Well, this means these mysterious angels come from the earth. They present to God the needs and petitions of poor sinners. And in return, they bring to poor sinners the graces and consolations from God. Friends, Holy Church has always understood this to be a prophetic definition of the sacred priesthood. The priests are these angels ascending and descending upon the very cross of Christ, acting in the very person of Christ in every sacrament, but especially when offering in his name the divine victim at the holy sacrifice of the Mass, and when reconciling poor sinners in the tribunal of mercy, the confessional. Young men, if you ambition to achieve such a role of your own initiative and relying on your own skills, however spectacular those may be, I tell you, go away or think again until you understand that Christ is the one who calls and who acts through his priests. But then, if you think he calls you, be reassured, realizing that he makes up for our weakness and empowers us to make us valid and fruitful ministers, co-shepherds to his flock, under him and with him. On this Good Shepherd Sunday, therefore, we must give thanks to God for the gift of the sacred priesthood. We must also intercede 
for our bishops and priests that they be always more faithful collaborators of Christ, the Sovereign High Priest. Please pray for the 330 priests of the priestly fraternity of St. Peter, serving souls in 260 mass centers across four continents. In particular, for our 12 priests from the UK and Ireland, ordained since 2002, Father Conrad Lovenstein, Father Brandon Jarrett, Fathers Matthew Goddard and William Barker, Father Simon Harkins, Father Matthew McCarthy, Father Ian Verrier, Father James Maudsley, Fathers Alex Stewart and Christoph Sanetra, Father Seth Phipps and Father Patrick O'Donoghue. Also, Father John Emerson and myself serving in these aisles for 20 years and more. Please also pray for our 174 seminarians and deacons preparing for the sacred priesthood in our two international seminaries in Europe and America and at our first year seminary in Australia. In particular, our six seminarians from the UK and Ireland, David, Conan, Tom, Henry, Miklosh, and Gwilym, the latter to be ordained a deacon next month and a priest next year, please God. Pray for the various young men currently discerning God's call to the sacred priesthood. Many of you pray for these intentions. You do it specifically through the confraternity of St. Peter, our international prayer network for priestly vocations. I would like to thank wholeheartedly the 7,390 members of the Confraternity of St. Peter worldwide, some of whom are present in the pews here today, and many more of whom are with us by a live Mass. Please continue to pray for many more priestly vocations and for the sanctification of all of us already ordained. That the mercy of the Lord might fill the earth May the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of the Sovereign High Priest, pray for all our priests and seminarians, obtaining from God the shepherds we need. O Lord, grant us priests. O Lord, grant us holy priests. O Lord, grant us many holy priests. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen.